little conversation that you have off to the side. And so I'm curious to see the type of adjustments that both of these head coaches will make throughout the course of the game when they go through adversity. Cardinals won the toss, and no surprise for Louisville. They elected to receive Vibe Petrino in his last eight years. He's won the coin toss 52 times. He's taken the ball 48 out of those 52 times. I like those odds. Western Kentucky's kicker, Alex Rinella, will send it deep. Hassan Hall, the true freshman from Atlanta. And there's been some confusion about who's on which side of the field. Western Kentucky. They switch sides again. Inauspicious start, at least they can have a laugh about it. There's the second youngest coach in all of FBS, Mike Sanford. 36 years of age, only Lincoln Riley from Oklahoma is younger. And all right, we got the situation settled and we are ready for football. For the first time in 20 years, the Hilltoppers and the Cardinals. And from a few yards deep, he wanted to bring it out, but Hassan Hall told to take a knee, and the freshman obliges. Jawan Puma Pass, third-year sophomore. He's got big shoes to fill to Keo, obviously, but he spends a lot of time talking to Lamar Jackson. They communicate regularly. And, and finally, he's got a normal night. The weather's great. No elements to thwart him catching the snap. Let's see what he can do. They are expecting big things out of him. They want to know, they want his identity to show up tonight. And let's see what Bobby Petrino cooks up to be able to give him a chance. Mickey Crum, the tight end, was in motion. And the handoff up the middle for about four yards. And Colin Wilson, the starter in the backfield. There's going to be a lot of rotating in the running backs for both sides here tonight. Petrino in his ninth year as the coach of the Cardinals. Year five of stint number two. Second down, pass. What the Cardinals cannot afford. That's just a, a, an uncharacteristic drop from Marcus Riley. A simple cross and route across the middle, but Marcus Riley, the wide receiver, you got to be able to catch those, especially knowing Puma Pass had so many troubles last week. It's important to get his confidence up in order to keep the sticks moving. Third and seven, and Pass looks to the sideline. Got five wide receivers out there on the field. Louisville didn't get going offensively last week until the second half when Malik Cunningham came in the game. Pass on the move. He's not going to get the first down, scrambling for about four, and it'll be fourth down. Great coverage all across the board when you look at Western Kentucky defense. Both corners are locked up on the outside. Defensive coordinator Clayton White, he talked about understanding tendencies. That's the reason why Boomer Pass had to pull the pass down and try to get as much as he could. So the Cardinals go three and out. And Mason King, who's punted the ball 14 times the first two weeks of the season, boots it deep from the 29-yard line up the middle. And Roger Craig almost broke it. There's a flag down in the field. Our referee tonight is John Nolde. We got temperate summer conditions tonight at Cardinal Stadium in the mid 80s this evening. Noli's still trying to get a hand on it. 10, 
Let's take a look at our four keys to the game. How can the Hilltoppers keep it close tonight? Well, it's important for the Hilltoppers to come in. First of all, not get any penalties will make it easy, but they have to establish the tempo early. They understand when you're dealing with Brian Van Gorder, the defensive coordinator of Louisville, he's going to come out and he's going to blitz. But by establishing that tempo, it will make him hard to make those plays call in Louisville. They have to deny the big play on the back end, understand and communicate throughout properly because they have a lot of young defensive players, Evan, and that's important when you're trying to establish what you want as an identity as a defense. Steven Duncan completes his first pass of the 2018 season and a pretty good gain on first down to Jacquez Sloan. And when you get this type of motion, this is simply you to try get moving the ball down the field. 13 yards on the pass from Duncan, who this time gives it to Joshua Samuel. A decent gain of five. TK, what do you think Stephen Duncan is thinking about? First of all, he's the first player from Ashley Ridge High School in Charleston, South Carolina, to sign a scholarship at an FBS level school. So he didn't come from a super powerhouse program. And then think about what his family's been dealing with in the low country of South Carolina, what everyone in the Carolinas has been dealing with. Making your first career start on the road. And that'll wake you up at it like that across the middle. Yeah, but he was positive. Now he puts his team in position for a third and one. And look at the tempo and understand he went through his progressions. And the thing I like about what he just did, he didn't force the issue. He got what he could. By the spot, look like they're going to have the first down. For the Louisville defense, Dorian Etheridge, their leading tackler last year, one of the great freshmen in the ACC in 2017. Well, he was helped off the field last week after he sprained his ankle, and he is not going to go tonight. That moves Robert Hicks, a true freshman from Miami, into the starting lineup. And we're going to have our eyes on him, because I know you like to critique young linebackers. Yeah, it's only constructive criticism, but Robert Hicks making his first start. He's going to get an eyeful with this type of offense. I want to see if his eyes are going to be okay to be able to track the ball. There's Hicks making the stop after a gain of five. When you've got a young freshman middle linebacker, and you're going against a team that plays the tempo that the Hilltoppers want to play, what are your concerns as a coach? Well, the concerns are, as you look right here, he's looking to... to set your defensive front. Offside. Offense. Number 85. Five yard penalty. Still set to Mike Juan Dean, the tight end, didn't line up at the right spot. Yeah, but this is this is a mental penalty. As a tight end, you know where you're supposed to line up all the time, but this is the negative. When you look at high tempo offenses, you have to make sure guys are set. You're trying to go at a faster pace to put the defense at a disadvantage. But as you saw there, they put themselves at a disadvantage by not lining up on side. Well, last week, Western Kentucky got off to a magical start against the University of Maine. They led 21 nothing six minutes into the game. And then all of a sudden, they just lost their mojo. The Black Bears rolled off 31 straight points, blocked the field goal as time. But not for much. Powerful tackle by a gang of red. Kyle Fortenberry took the hit. And there's D. Smith, one of the leaders of this Cardinal defense, slow to get up. That's not good. D. Smith, he brings a lot a playmaking ability senior on this defense. Let's just hope he's okay. D. Smith, 112 career tackle, shaken up. Time out on the field. I'm Diana Rauner. Bruce ran for governor to try to save our state. Tonight, here in Kentucky. Western Kentucky on third down across midfield, needing six yards for the first. Stephen Duncan, two for two so far. Rifles downfield, it's intercepted. Picked off by 
CJ Avery. And Avery into Hilltopper territory. The first mistake of the day for the young man from Charleston. Stephen Duncan, he looked down the receiver the entire time. And what does CJ Avery do? He just put And that's the reason why he was able to get up underneath the route and be able to make it. When you play a cover two like that, it requires your outside linebackers to watch the quarterback. If he's looking that way, then he's going to guide with him. Too many, too much eyes by Stephen Duncan on that play. First career pick for C.J. Avery. And the Cardinals are in business from the Hilltopper 44. Wonder how that interception will change the quarterback rotation. We are expecting to see David Shanley and Stephen Duncan. And there's a fumble on the field. And is it picked up in bounds? It's very close to the sideline. Just got extended. Several Hilltoppers had a shot as Colin Wilson coughed it up. And the referees say second down. are hard to overturn, but we'll get a look at it. Great strip by number 44, Ben Hope. He's the football player. He's the guy who makes a lot of plays. It's a play by one of the guys trying to throw it back in. Jarrell Green threw it back in, understanding that he couldn't recover because he was going out of bounds. But the Cardinals, they were able to recover. Well, in a situation for Louisville where several running backs are trying to become the number one guy, not protecting the football is a good way to find yourself on the bench. Yeah, that's a good way for you to find yourself on the bench and not play. Colin Wilson, he has to take care of that ball. And, and, and to that point, when you look at Louisville's offense, type of team we're going to stretch the field have successful plays and you can't have those type of negative plays turning the ball over and gain some confidence with your quarterback struggling like he did last week and what is the identity of Louisville football I mean people think about Bobby Petrino wanting to throw the ball but he's always run the ball 48 45 50 percent of the time he, he keeps pretty good balance in fact last year the Cardinals ran for 3186 yards the most yards any Louisville team had ever run for in a season Ruling won't please Mike Sanford. But Bobby Petrino's team will keep the ball. And it'll be second down and 11. The first series, Louisville came out in a spread formation. Now they're. Two wide receivers, 12 personnel. Pass under center. And this formation is used mostly for run. Got Jeremy Smith behind him. The give to Smith. He made his season debut last week, and he lost the football as he got drilled in the backfield. Now you watch the fumble, McNeil jumps on the ball in the end. Is that? And, it, and it's a lot of things that goes under that happens in the power. Yeah, it was, it was Linwood Foy, the left tackle. Made his first career start a couple weeks ago against the Crimson Tide. And now a pre-snap penalty on third down. No, a timeout. Well, yeah, both coaches wanted to get off to a little bit of a rhythm at the start of this game and between the penalties and the turnovers and the stoppages and the injuries. A little herky-jerky. It is. It's, it's a little herky-jerky. And from an offensive perspective, they are not where they want to be on third down. This is the second third down that Louisville has had. 
to where it's third and long. And when you want your quarterback to be successful, you want to put him in third and five, third and six, to where it's a higher percentage as far as making that first down. Well, the start today is kind of reminiscent to the start to the season for the Cardinals. Again, they had some bright moments, but they were just overmatched in Orlando against the Crimson Tide. Alabama defense was dominant, and the Crimson Tide won 51 to 14, but at least they were dry. Yeah, but a week later, it was a different type of frustrating night. The monsoon, the rain, but you see the turnovers by Puma Pass. He is more eager than anybody to come out here and show he's a better player than what he's shown over the past two weeks. Pass is thrown a little bit behind Jalen Smith. This is a simple one-on-one -on -one route. Jalen Smith does a nice job pushing up the field. He puts the foot in the ground to come back around. He got two hands on the ball. Yeah, the ball was a little bit behind him, but we know what Jalen can do, and we expect for him to make those type of passes, but I'm sure these guys will go back to the sideline and talk about it. He's right near the first down marker. Instead, Mason King with his second punt of the first six minutes. Fair catch called for and made by Gray at his 11. No toppers and Cardinals scoreless in the opening quarter. Okay. Truth is, Illinois is in trouble. It didn't get here. Percent or more. Western Kentucky has the football. 9.03 to go in the first quarter. Time for our hardy start a watch. We're looking at Lucky Jackson, an explosive receiving threat for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, and you look at his, his game last week against Maine. Four catches for 115 yards, two touchdowns. It was exciting to see him get the ball because he has the big play capability, not only to take it to the house, but to get by defenders. Meanwhile, the uh, number 11 for the other side, D. Smith, strolling toward the locker room. They already lost Captain John Grenard from the defensive line. Now their other defensive captain, D. Smith, is shaken up. A lot of young players out there for the Cardinal defense. Around the edge. Big game for Garland LaFrance, a true freshman that Mike Sanford is incredibly excited about. Garland LaFrance does a great job, but I love the way he understands running lanes. And when you look at his game last week against Maine, he did the same exact thing and had a, a, a couple of big runs. So look forward to seeing him do the same thing today. Short game this time. Back to LaFrance, who had a catch and run of 75 yards for a touchdown, his first touchdown as a college football player. Coach Sanford talked about, we need to establish the run to keep these guys honest. And that's exactly what he's been doing over the past three drops. To give his offensive line a chance to pass block better, too. LaFrance out of the backfield meets a swarm of Cardinals, led by Hicks and Avery and Sturgill. Stephen Duncan, he came back, he surveyed the field, he didn't like what he saw. Checked it down to the front. Robert Hicks there for the tackle. And that's what you want out of your middle linebacker, to understand the flow of the game, to be able to, to mirror that running back. All along the backfield now on third and five. Duncan appears to be changing the play. He had time, and he locks it over the head of Xavier Lane. One wrinkle that we'll be following tonight to Keo. Mike Samford, the head coach, calls the plays for Western Kentucky. Brian Van Gorder, the defensive coordinator, calls the defenses for Louisville. Samford and Van Gorder were on the same Notre Dame Fighting Irish staff for two seasons going head-to-head -head in practice. They know each other's tendencies. They're very familiar with what each other likes to do. Listen, you talk about tendencies. I was expecting Brian Van Gorder to come with the blitz. He played man across the board with two safeties over the top. That's breaking tendencies, and you know they know that about each other. Roger Burns is very dangerous. 
He was hit on the catch. A flag uh -oh. is down. And he's across midfield. And it's the punter for Western Kentucky, Alex Rinella, who the coach has said, by the way, is one of their best guys in the weight room. Helps to make the tackle. He displayed his strength just in. Sanford says it's coming back. Could be multiple penalties here. He was close to getting interfered with making the catch on the punt. So Noli's brought the whole crew together. They're not talking about post-game dinner reservations. Or maybe they are. So the punter gets dinged with the horse collar tackle. It's amazing he even caught this ball. Look at the concentration. Had a big punt return last week for a touchdown in the monsoon. But he pretty much basically just set up his blocks and let his athletic ability to take over. And look at Robert. It was Kyle Bailey who almost interfered with a Rajay Burns catch. And right when pass takes the snap, whistles. Ubiquitous. <laughs> Up amused, Mike Sanford. He wants some clarity. That's exactly what he's looking like. And this guy. It, it, Bobby Petrino has a similar scoff on his face. <laughs> Seth Dawkins did a nice job jumping out in front of Burns here, giving him a lead blocker. For a minute, the way that he, he came out with the block, I thought it was Robert Hicks, the freshman inside linebacker. Two, but two number five. Two Dr. number Cardinal. five. But I'm, I'm just saying, his mentality, he put his head down. I like it. I like the mentality. Unselfish football player. Do you know what they're reviewing here? I don't know. I had a hard time understanding it. 36 yards on the Burns return, if it stands. They are investigating, we understand, a potential targeting call, which could disqualify the offending player. Mike Sanford came to Bowling Green after serving as the offensive coordinator at Notre Dame and at Stanford. Both head coaches today, former quarterbacks, Sanford was a signal caller at Boise State in the early 2000s. Right side of your screen. Oh, wow. That, I mean, that was certainly helmet to helmet. It's hard to tell exactly who it was from our angle. Ike is the right side of the screen. Let's see, can we see it? Is it coming up yet? There were plenty of physical blocks on this return. And I'm not sure that's a horse collar tackle either. He just now, dragged him from the back of the jersey. Yeah, the horse collar ta tackle, that's usually when the hand is inside the back of the shoulder pad to use to help bring the runner down.
confusion on both sidelines right now. Rajay Burns staring, wondering, just like us. And you look at Devon Peep right there, he's explaining his case. And I understand where he's coming from because when we looked at the clip earlier, I I can see the targeting call when the defender don't see the opposing player coming to block and then it comes in their area. But it seemed to me that the defender saw him and they both kind of went head to head by his natural reaction by trying to duck. So we're looking number 86, Devontae P. Keep your eye on him. Is, is that hit on Western Kentucky's L.A. Rogers? Or is, let's see. Let's see. They made dinner reservations without you, Evan. I already got plans with you, so I'm good. You can get us that table anywhere. You're good. You're right. After review, personal foul, targeting number 95 of the kicking team. The player is disqualified. Number 95 of the kicking team. Did he have the right number? Western Kentucky's Keith Wiggins. And it looks like his night is over prematurely. Redshirt Jr. from Mayfield. He also plays defensive end. He is not listed on there too deep. Now we're watching 95. So we, we, he, he got the worst of the exchange, so I don't see how you can say he was targeting. If anything, he was targeted. Yes. He was the target. Yeah. Hey, we just called the game. We're not the officials. So, after a lengthy delay, reminiscent of last week for different circumstances, pass, throws it, and it's picked off. This one right here is not on Puma Pass. Puma did a nice job of identifying the blitz coming from his left side. He knew it was a hot. He threw it to Kamari Everett. Everett, and you got to make those plays. You got to be able to help your quarterback out, especially knowing that he's struggling. And this does not help. It actually contributes to the struggle. First and 10, Western Kentucky. I mean, how many times can this game zigzag in half a quarter? And remember, the defensive coordinator, Coach Clayton White, I asked him, I'm like, Coach, give me some insight on some guys on the defensive side who can make plays. D'Angelo Malone, he did it. New quarterback for the Hilltoppers, Davis Shanley, in the game. He had a couple nice throws against the Badgers. Was two for three throwing the ball in relief. The give is to Marquez Trigg. And the Hilltoppers team that struggled as much as anybody in the country to run the ball last week with a decent game on first down makes it second and five. Yeah, so now he's rotating the quarterbacks. And he may even go into a rhythm where he may give them a, a, a series here and a series there to see who has the momentum. Drew Eccles. Start of the first two weeks, had multiple shoulder injuries, upper body injuries, didn't practice as the give gets within one of the line to gain. DeAndre Furby and Marquez Trigg in the backfield for the Hilltoppers. It's third and one. They're going tempo pace right here. Shanley tries to muscle across the marker. And the spot will give him the first. 
It was interesting how Mike Sanford talked about how the Hilltoppers divvied up snaps in practice. He said usually when they've got the clear number one guy, they'll give six snaps to the number one guy and then four snaps to the number two. This past week, he gave ten to one guy and then ten to the other guy to try to let him get in a little more of a rhythm. Yeah, and that's important for a coach because you want to see these guys get into a rhythm and how they handle every snap. Sanford said it'll be two series for Duncan, two series for Shanley, and then they'll see where they're at. There's a flag thrown as Marquez Trigg takes it out to the 44. A gain of 14 if it stands. That's usually a holding call when they throw it behind the line of scrimmage like that. Holding. Offense, number 85. 10-yard penalty. Replay. First down. As a linebacker, was it always real thrilling to see that flag in the backfield? Absolutely. And, and most of the time when you usually see it, it comes after a long game when you're running behind somebody. But if you look at the tight end here, number 85, Mike Juan Dean, they call him for the holding penalty. So that negates a 14-yard gain. It's an eight-yard penalty that flag occurred a couple yards downfield, so the not so conventional first and 18 for the toppers. We haven't even played 10 minutes. Feels like we've seen Western everything. Western Kentucky, their second. It will be 30 seconds. Correction, media. Timeout, WKU. We'll take it two. Scoreless in the first. Louisville Slugger Factory. Got word that D. Smith has returned to the field for the Louisville Cardinals. On first down, Davis Shanley swings it to the perimeter. Gino Appleberry Jr., another true freshman in the lineup for the Hilltoppers. And I think they had a little... C.J. Avery, the linebacker, he was a little slow going to the flat. Coach, he, they talked about this in their meeting that we got to understand what we need to do in order to have great plays out there in our football field. Appleberry met in the backfield by Trey Sean Smith. Trey Sean Smith coming from his safety position, he was shot out of a cannon. That's good football. That's what Brian Van Gorder wants for safeties to do. When you recognize the play, be committed to your decision. Smith, the guy who suffered a knee injury in the Tax Slayer Bowl last year, looking 100% again for Louisville. Third down and six. Shanley, QB draw, first down, Hilltoppers. Great play call. Great play call by Mike Sanford. He motioned the running back out of the pocket. It took the linebacker out, designed quarterback draw to get the first down. Great play call. LaFrance took the handoff. Scurries out of bounds. Hilltoppers not gaining big chunks, but going the positive direction. Yeah, and it's surprising because looking at what they've done in the past, you would have thought that they'd try to get the ball down the field. They are staying committed to the run. Westerns have the ball more than twice as much as the Cardinals. And that ball is complete to the outside. Quinn Jernigan knocked out of bounds by London Yacopo. First down, Hilltoppers at the 36. Yacopo was thinking six the other way. Yeah, David Stanley, he put enough on this ball to be able to make it happen. But th these are the little five-yard increment plays that they're going to gain confidence and have success on. Beg your pardon, it was in Bannister going for the pick as Shanley again takes it himself. Gain of seven. And I wanted to know, what does David Shanley bring to the table? And I talked to the coach, and they said, yeah, of course, he's the prototypical size as a quarterback. But he understands the system, and he can make every throw. Mike Sanford 
trying to get his guys in the right frame of mind. Obviously, it's been a, it's been a frustrating couple of weeks. The loss at Wisconsin, understandable. The loss to Maine had people asking questions in Bowling Green. Mike Sanford and Brian Van Gorder have had a bunch of friendly battles in practice. And I was asking you this week, TK, what is the relationship usually like between the OC and the DC? How competitive is it? How collaborative is it in practice? Oh, it's competitive. It's only collaborative before you get on the football field when you talk about what you want to do to service each other as a, a unit. But these guys right here now, you can tell tendencies are broken. Then Gordon, especially him, he loves to blitz. Even on third down and third down in long situations, he has not done that yet. And the play calling by Coach Sanford is, is predicated off of these tendencies. So uh, we having great football right now, Evan. Second down and three. Western Kentucky trying to strike first in what has been a wacky opening quarter in Louisville. Trig up the middle near the first down marker and smacked backwards by Michael Boykin. De DeAndre Furby, he's doing a nice job. Well, really his offensive line when you look at it. This offensive line is doing a very good job. We saw a few seconds ago Coach Sanford giving love to his offensive linemen knowing that they are the reason why they're able to sustain drops. Yeah, you're right on that. That was DeAndre Furby, Hilltoppers leading rusher a year ago. A new set of downs for Davis Shanley. Furby up the middle, breaks a couple tackles into the red zone for the Hilltoppers. Some tough running. Tough running. If you look at what they did against Maine last week or what they couldn't do, they talked about the smaller defensive line and gave them trouble. They would rather play against a team who has bigger studs like Louisville in the inside. And this offensive line, Evan, they're doing a good job with natural push, putting the man on the man body on the body, giving the runner back an opportunity to slip on the crease. And this is an offensive line that is very young and has five guys playing positions they didn't play last year. Furby with another strong game to move the chains again. Our look into the red zone brought to you by CPI Security. Western Kentucky trying to cap off this lengthy drive with a score. Sanford understands the importance of we need when we get into inside the red zone, we need to walk away with points. He's not stressing the issue of trying to throw the ball around. Here's the run, run, run. The 15th play of the drive now in the CPI red zone. Furby trying to break it outside, but good shoestring tackle there by Yakopo. Wouldn't let him go. Third down coming up. Big third down. You see Furby, he's trying to find the crease. Good job of making the tackle, but now it's a third down. You ask yourself the question, do you try to force the issue and pass, which they're coming out in an empty backfield set? So let's just see what specialty play he has cooked up. Shanley, quick throw, completes it in the end zone. Kyle Fortenberry, the tight end, has the Hilltopper touchdown. Team play, 80-yard, 7-minute, 13-second drive for Western Kentucky. And that is methodical, Evan, a methodical drive by the Hilltoppers. Ryan Nuss for the point after, right down the middle. Five first downs on the drive, and Kyle Fortenberry, the red shirt sophomore from Alabama, finds the end zone, David Shanley, a nine-yard touchdown pass. David Shanley just 
getting the snap. He saw the open guy. Kyle Fultonberry. And the only thing that he did, he just ran a simple six-yard stick stop route, turned around and inspected the ball. We saw Trey Sean Smith stumble defensively. For more on Fortenberry down the field, Lindsey Rowley. Hey, Evan, yeah, and speaking with Coach Sanford yesterday, one of the questions I asked him was who was going to be important, who sticks out, that maybe not necessarily would be a well-known name, and he said Kyle Fortenberry. He was buried in the depth chart a couple years ago. He's an incredible story, has made amazing strides, and has now become a key player for this football team. His fourth catch of the season is the Hilltoppers an early score late in the opening quarter. And while Fortenberry content on one sideline, on the other sideline, a sea of red that's wondering, what are we going to be? Defensively, you're upset, you're mad, because regardless of wherever you have sudden change, meaning your offense turns the ball over, give the ball back to the offense, offensively, now you're thinking, guys, can we sustain a drive? Can we catch the ball and do the little things right to get some points on the board? Take the give to Day Williams. Pull the pass. Taken down to the backfield. Devin Key with a booming hit. Uh, Make it Ben Holt to close out the first quarter. Now we talk about guys. Ben Holt does a great job of just staying in his zone and just playing it easy. And then he comes up and makes the tackle for a loss of sack. Hey, these guys have the momentum, and they're loving it right now. 7-0 Hilltoppers after one. I've lived. This week on ACC All Access, check out our player profile on Syracuse quarterback Eric Dungy, who got dinged up today in the Orange's big win over the Seminoles. Plus, can Bronco Mendenhall really hang 10? The Virginia head coach reveals how riding the waves is a great getaway. ACC All Access is back. Check your local listings on your regional sports network. Hello, Malik Cunningham. Welcome to the game. This looks like last week. Can Cunningham give them a spark again? Absolutely. And, 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 and this is what I like about Malik Cunningham. He comes into this game known as the zone read option guy. Uh, some of the same attributes as Lamar Jackson, being able to run versus pass first. He provided a spark for these guys last week that really took them over the edge to, to score points. Juwan Puma pass. You and I were talking during the break, TK. Yeah, Louisville had negative two yards in the first quarter, but he had a, a bunch of his receivers drop passes that were on the money. Yeah, and you can't put all of that on him, but as a result, you got to do what's best for the team to spark something, and that's exactly what Malik Cunningham is doing right now. Ball was a little loose, but Cunningham hangs on. This redshirt freshman was explosive last week against the Sycamores. And, and this is what he brings to the table that's a little different. His mobility, he's able to sustain drives, and Coach Petrino has so much confidence in him, they're going for it on fourth down with the ball on their own 32-yard line. This is bold. Western Kentucky went for it on their own 15 last week. It did not work out for the Hilltoppers. I don't like this. I, I don't like it. They snap it. They need to get to the 35, and Cunningham didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And that's the reason why I don't like it. Great play by Baby and the Hilltoppers defense. We talked about tendencies coming into this game, so they know when Malik Cunningham comes into the game, his bread and butter play is the zone read option. And so you call defending plays for your defense to know, hey, regardless of what, we're going to play this because this is a high percentage play that he's had success on, especially last week. And that's the reason why they were able to come up with the stop. Great play by Kyle Bailey. Yeah, he was shot out of a cannon there defensively. He did his homework. And now the Hilltoppers take over on the Louisville 31-yard line. Total yards right now in the game, 143 to 11. And that's after 13 positive yards on the last drive from the Cardinals. Shanley still in the game. Fires downfield, completes 
Takes it into the end zone. No signal yet for the touchdown. It looks like they're going to mark Jernigan out inside the five. They spotted at the three yard line, first and goal. You like that play call from Sanford? Really like that play call. They've been establishing the run all day. You fake the run, and you get the corner one on one matchup with Quinn Jernigan. Hard to tell from that angle if he stepped out of bounds. Very hard to tell. But now, they're final. The previous play is under review. Well, they'll probably give him the timeout back if they give him the touchdown. See, but this this is what happens when you when you talk about tendencies and knowing certain guys do certain things when coordinators be on certain teams. I truly believe he knew we're going to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup position when we get into the red zone. We've been running the football the entire night. Let's take a chance. And it paid off for them. There's the step at the three-yard line. And I'm not sure there's anything there to overturn it. But to me, it looks like he was in bounds. Yeah. It's hard to see. I don't know if they're questioning the fact. It, I don't know what they're questioning. We'll be able to see it on this end zone view here. Whether it's a touchdown or first and goal from the three, the Hilltoppers have to be feeling pretty good, and it's a complete 180 from how they were feeling at this time last Saturday when they shockingly dropped to 0-2, losing at home to Maine out of the football championship subdivision. Mike Sanford, after that game, said, look, I truly believe we are the team that got off to the hot drop the first six minutes. Throwing on the field stands, first down. So it'll be Hilltopper's ball first and goal at the three. And he talked about how some of his favorite moments in coaching are when a team is struggling. And coaching is about trying to find solutions to difficult problems. I don't know if all the problems are solved, but they're moving in the right direction, at least from the first 18 minutes today. Listen, they are playing with high confidence, knowing, uh, and you wouldn't expect that, knowing what happened last week with this football team. I think a lot of it has to do with playing a power five team. And these guys want the exposure. Shanley keeps it untouched for the touchdown. Cardinal fans are stunned here in Louisville. Folks who made the drive up from Bowling Green enjoying themselves. They are not disappointed. And you take a look at the Louisville fans. They are, the look on their faces says it all. Just disgust, uh, frustrated. They want something to cheer about. Well, Malik Cunningham came in the game, gained a little spark, but then they went for it on fourth and three from their own 32. Did not get it. And Davis Shanley has been in the game for two drives. He's delivered two touchdowns, one in the air, this one on the ground, 14-0. And in March, Barry, the tight end who came up with the touchdown catch earlier, he comes around and makes the ceiling block that allows Davis Shanley to walk into the end zone untouched. It was Robert Hicks, the freshman who stepped in for Dorian Etheridge, who got blocked. Any coaching point there about the, the angle? Well, you, you have to look at it like this. You're playing a man defense. So the guy who is responsible for Cal Fortenberry, by him going across the formation, he is responsible for coming over making that play. Three-yard touchdown for Shanley. And then Hassan Hall can't get back to the 20. Jawan Puma pass has not completed a pass. This one right here that turned into an interception.
receivers. I mean, people thought all summer that receiving would be the strength of this Cardinals team. Cunningham back out there for his second. Western Kentucky defense is doing a very good job of getting the calls. Complete to Fitzpatrick. So Cunningham with the first completed pass of the day for the Cardinals. About three and a half minutes into the second quarter against the Hilltoppers. And that's unheard of. If you look at the total amount of yards that the Cardinals have been able to accumulate over the past two games. And over the years. And over the years, they're last in the ACC in offense. Some space on the outside, but unable to keep his feet. Marcus Riley stumbled and goes down. It'll move the chains, but Riley wanted more. Marcus, Rock, Marcus Riley does a nice job of just running to clear open space, but the turf monster got the freshman out of Tallahassee, Florida. Defense appreciates that 12th man defensively, that turf monster. You can't account for it. First down from the 42, Cunningham drops back, steps up, fakes it, and now has room across midfield. Cunningham into Hilltopper territory, down hard on the Western sideline. It's interesting to Keo. Because Cunningham has undeniably given them a spark. Yeah, and, and, and this is why you put him in the game. I don't care what you practice for throughout the week as a defense. It's one thing to know what he can do, but it's another thing to actually see him do it. And that is going to be the hard thing that Coach Wright, the defensive coordinator, must take into account when he calls his plays from now on. Many of the fans wanted a flag. None flew. And well, here's your flag flying. False start. Offense, number 72, five-yard penalty, first down. The senior captain, Lucas McNeil, making his 37th career start. So first and 10 becomes first and 15. And I was, I was saying it's interesting because Cunningham has undeniably given them a spark. But is he the guy for the rest of the season? I mean, they start ACC play next week. And as you said before, it wasn't Puma Pass's fault. But they're down 14 nothing, and now they've lost four or five more yards out of the backfield of Jeremy Smith. Well, who knows? It's too early to tell exactly if this will be his position for the rest of the year, depending on how this game finishes up. But one thing I want to acknowledge, Coach White, the defensive coordinator for Western Kentucky, he said there's three things that my team, I want my guys to come out and show. Speed, high IQ, understanding what's going on, and passion for the game when we make big plays. And that's exactly what they've done thus far until the second quarter. Clayton White, the defensive coordinator for the Hilltoppers, has experience going against Louisville. Spent four years at North Carolina State as a Wolf Pack alum. Cunningham sails it over the head of Devontae Pete. So it is third and a very long way for the Cardinals. He made the right read, which is important, but he just threw it high. Great job by Gage Walker, the DB, by aligning himself in that throwing lane, which caused him to throw the football a little high. Louisville's 0 for 3 on third downs, and this one is a doozy. It's third and 19. You can't try to get it all back with a young, inexperienced quarterback. Late clock, close to expiring, and Bobby Petrino has to take the time out. <laughs> 9.02 remaining in the second quarter. 
Cardinals trying to figure things out. And going to be on third and 19, Cunningham rifles downfield, and it should have been intercepted, deflected to the ground by Western Kentucky's Devin Key. Who is Lamar Jackson's successor going to be? I'm not sure Bobby Petrino knows right now. I don't know, but this was a bad pass by Malik Cunningham. And, and this is what I mean when you have young and experienced players, especially at the quarterback position. You were behind the sticks, third and 19. You have to tell you guys, don't force anything, but just take what they have and we'll come back and regroup on the sideline with the next play. Roger Cray, fair catch around his 11 yard line. Well, let's look at the numbers for Pass and Cunningham. Ugly. That, that's bad. We didn't forget to update those yards, by the way. They're, they're both zeros. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty bad, and, and if you're a fan right now, you, you should be a little bit frustrated. Cunningham does have 31 yards rushing, but, I mean, Juwan Pass, his three throws hit his receiver's hands all three times. Yeah, and, 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 and to that point, I would like to see Juwan Pass back in this game. I would have given him probably maybe another series or, or two series just to see could he fight his way out of the funk and could the guys help him out. Davis Shanley back in there for the Hilltoppers from their own 11. And it's Joshua Samuel into the arms of the big 6-6 deep tackle Jared Goldwire after a three-yard game. You give a lot of credit to the defensive line doing a nice job. Jerry Goldwire staying deep, staying low, playing with his hands. And that's what you want from defense alignment. Do not get moved out of your pocket, unlike two series ago, Evan. Unlike two series ago, they was on a 16 play drop. So those guys were tired. Issue with the clock, it never started on that play, so they'll take a little time off. First rushing play of the half. That's almost as many as the Hilltoppers had last week. And Mike Sanford stressed it all week long. So we got to give not only our running backs a chance, but our offensive line a chance to get into the game, to get into a rhythm, to not just let the defense charge them and rush the passer. Yeah, and now that they are in a the rhythm, these guys have gained a lot of confidence. D. Smith, the safety, is back in. Big time senior, guy who provides a lot of leadership. Let's see if he's able to make a play in this football game to change the momentum. Hilltoppers, four of six on third down. Pressure coming, and that ball incomplete. Off the hands of DeAndre Furby. Now, that's the defensive series, what they want. I'm pretty sure Van Gorder, he likes that. He came with the blitz on that last series to make the quarterback get the ball out of his hands fast. And those are the things that, that happen as a result. Incomplete pass because the quarterback is trying to get it out of his hands quick before the receiver turns his head. Ranella ready to boot her away on fourth and five. Rajay Burns back at his own 43. His first return today went for 36. This one a high short kick. Fair caught at the 47 yard line. Well, Mike Sanford, 36 years old, trying to figure things out. He's up by two scores. Western Kentucky in front, 14-0. Greatness is made here, presented by Sonovis. What have you seen so far from the Hilltoppers, Jaquiel? Momentum, belief, and they have been given that just by the way that they have played. You see the safety right there. Sean Bailey comes on the outside and makes a tackle for the loss. And then the play calling by spreading around the field, understanding tendencies down in the end zone, the red zone, Davis Stanley celebrating with his teammates and what he's done he's came in and provided a big spark for this offensive football team and the defense is playing well behind him. Cunningham gives it to Jeremy Smith 
And, and we talked a lot about the Hilltopper offense, but what about this Western Kentucky defense? We've seen bright spots from them, both against Wisconsin and against Maine. And this entire first half against the Cardinals has been a defensive highlight reel for the Hilltop. Yeah, and speed is the first thing that comes to mind. As you, as you just saw right there, one guy missed the tackle, but you saw four other guys around the football, and that's what they want. That's what the coaches teaches them. Everything can be covered up by if you play with speed. Cunningham keeps it, gets a block. There's a flag. This one looks to be coming back. Yeah, and like I said earlier, when you see a flag behind the line of scrimmage. Holding, offense number seven, 10 yard penalty. Replay second down. Des Fitzpatrick guilty. And we talked about it in the open. I know they have big time receivers, but you have to do the little things right when you're not getting the ball. Des Fitzpatrick call for holding. And I must admit, it's frustrating. As a receiver, the first thing in your mind is, I need to get the football. I didn't come here to block, but it's all about team. Second and long, straight drop. Cunningham fired deep. That ball was through the hands of Jalen Smith. They, you got to catch the football. And I give Malik Cunningham great credit. He made the right read, read the defense, saw the one-on-one. -on -one. Jalen Smith is usually the go-to guy. First throw. First team all ACC last year. One critique it, throw may be a little high, but certainly one Smith should, should make. Can the Cardinals complete a third down for the first time? Cunningham, there's a flag thrown in the backfield. And he's not going anywhere. Barely back to the line of scrimmage. And if the flag's on Louisville, Mike Sanford will decline it. Holding offense number 72. The penalty's declined. Fourth down. Cardinals hearing some boos. And a frustrated look on the captain, Lucas McNeil's face. Mason King to punt. Cray standing back at his own 10. Spiral, returnable, fumbled. Cray scoops it up. And turns it into a positive play out across the 20. So Western Kentucky up 14 nothing has the football again when we return to Louisville. Let's check in on the Cardinals sideline. Lindsey Rowley is right there. Thanks so much, Evan. As you said, I'm down on the Louisville sideline where there is definitely a lack of energy at this point in time. And it just seems every time the Cardinals seem to get a little bit of momentum, something happens to suck the momentum out. So certainly looking to sustain some momentum here going into halftime. It's been a, a flabbergasting first half at times. All the drop passes, the penalties, the decision to go for it on fourth and three from their own 32. And meanwhile, the Hilltoppers running game just went over the 100 yard mark and that will not please defensive coordinator Brian Van Gorder. Yeah, and they're pretty much just blocking them up front. Well, guys, when you look at it, Tavares Peterson, nice job of hustle on the backside to come back and make that tackle. Furby for 14 and now Shanley down the sideline looking for Jernigan incomplete. Now that you see Western Kentucky having some success running the football, I expect to see more play action plays like that to see can you catch these guys off guard. Defensively from Louisville, I expect Brian Van Gorder to mix up his blitzes a little bit more. He's been kind of playing these guys straight up man-to-man -man coverage, but I expect him since the tempo has slowed down to kind of bring some guys on the blitz. Four wide receivers for Shanley on second down. 
And he'll zip it to Jacquez Sloan. And that's another first down. And, and let's give credit to this Western Kentucky offensive line, which looked flummoxed last week. Leader of this unit, Cole Spencer, playing with a broken thumb. He suffered it in the third series against Wisconsin. Didn't realize he suffered it until the end of the game. And he took off his gloves, and his thumb was purple. Hey, that's a true warrior when you have guys like that. I've had experience playing with a broken hand in the game, and it's, 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 it's tough to be able to do your job, especially as an offensive lineman. Cole Spencer's doing a nice job tonight. And then there's the fact that he's from Louisville. Both of his parents went to Louisville. His grandparents, his parents, his aunts, they're all at the game. He said despite the Louisville ties, they're all for the toppers. They picked the right team, at least for the first 20 minutes tonight. And that's what his family is for. <laughs> to the outside, Garland LaFrance. That had me wondering, TK, before the game, as an Auburn guy, sorry about that, by the way, the, the War Eagle will come back. If, if, your, if your daughter expressed interest in looking at a school in Tuscaloosa, how would you feel? Uh, you know, I, I would have my feelings about that, but when you talk about scholarship-wise, then, you know, I look the other way. <laughs> As you said, blood is everything. Hilltoppers with a big third down right here in Cardinal territory. Shanley on the move, fires short, and that is a loss of two. Mike Blondin stumbled making the catch. And we tick under four minutes to play in this first half. I don't even know if Louisville needs points. They just need something positive, a couple first downs. I think the end result is points. Of course, they obviously they would need that. But they need some first downs to be able to, to generate some type of confidence. When they get the ball back now, Evan, they will be pinned back going into the half. They should get this ball back with just three minutes left in this quarter. They came after the punter. He got it off, and the fair catch called for. There's a flag back by the punter. And Alex Ranella may have been roughed. It was fourth and seven. So if it's a five-yard penalty, it will not be a first down. Fair catch was made at the 17. And Noli wondering what Sanford wants to do. They could re-kick. They could spot him five yards further back. Running in the kicker, defense. Five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. They don't dare go for it here on fourth and two, do they? No, they don't. They don't. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend them going for it. But... Evan, the more I think about it, it may not be a bad move if you take into account even a fake punt here. And, and, and they took, he took his coach, Sanford took his coaching staff to study with the Eagles. And Dave Fripp, the Eagles special teams coordinator, he specializes in doing fake punts in this part of the field. So I don't know. Let's see. You don't want to give Rajay Burns another chance, but you want to pin him deeper than the 17. Fair catch signaled four. It's going to end up being about a four-yard penalty. Spotted between the 12 and the 13-yard line. And that sequence took another minute off the clock. So three minutes will it be Cunningham or pass. If I'm Cunningham coming out on this drive and Coach Petrino, I want to have something positive and at least get three points. That's what you want to be able to take back inside of the locker room, that we had a sustaining drive. We converted some third downs into first downs and walk away with something positive that you can hang your hat on. And they stay on schedule and get something positive on first down. Jalen Smith makes the catch, and he can't do much after it. Great pursuit by Takori and Darden. One of the several guys on this Hilltoppers team who arrived to Bowling Green as a walk-on and then earned a scholarship. Earned his starting spot as well. He had 71 tackles, played all 13 games a year ago. Great tackle by Takori and Darden. 
playing his own technique, came up and made the play. Cunningham races around the DN, throws back across his body, and it's dropped again through the traffic. You had 2 2 Atwell nearby. Devontae Pete as well. Another pass that was dropped. And I know it wasn't coming to it, but you got to be able to make those plays. That's a dangerous throw. That throw made me think of Sam Darnold's first throw on Monday Night Football this past yeah. Monday night. <laughs> Ended well for Sam the Savior. Got a win in his first start with the Jets. Now third down and 11. Cunningham rifles deep, and that one's caught. Jalen Smith has finally made a play for Louisville. And the crowd is, has erupted. There goes Jalen Smith making a big time play. Malik Cunningham, he waited on him. He saw that the, the middle of the field was boarded. Jalen Smith with strong hands bringing the ball. 31 yards from Cunningham to Smith. And now wide open does Fitzpatrick into Hilltopper territory. And now if you lose it, you play with tempo. You have the Hilltopper's defense. They're on their heels. They don't know what to expect. Continue to play with tempo. Push the issue. Gain of 17 to Fitzpatrick. First down at the Hilltopper 40. Under two minutes in the half. Cunningham takes off. Runs into the middle linebacker Ben Holt after a gain of six. At the top of the screen, Devontae Pete was wide open. Devontae Pete, you gotta find him. You, you gotta find him. You're gonna have those plays. I'm sure he wants to come back to it. Across the middle, that's another first down. Did Western Kentucky steal the football? DeAndre Ferris, one of the captains, claimed that he picked it off. Let's take a look. How long did Pete hang on? Looks like he had it. Yeah. So he didn't miss Pete that time. Monte Pete, the fourth year junior out of St. Thomas Aquinas. That high school has produced 15 guys who are currently on NFL rosters. Meanwhile, you got Mike Stanford stomping furiously on the field. No play. We were not in position to get a snap. Still first down. Stanford needs to be careful here. He doesn't want to get a penalty called on him, which will really ignite a fire under this Cardinal crowd. Right, and, and you don't want to put the Cardinals in a position to get an easy score here. Devontae P had to say something to Cunningham because he, he looked for him on the next play. Cunningham, quick hit into the red zone. They don't need to take a timeout here. They've got two remaining as we tick under a minute. Nice job by Devontae Pete. Understanding I got all coverage. I'm just going to run five yards and stop and just wait for the ball to come to me. Pitch and catch game. Eighth play of the drive. Not yet. Free snap penalty. Offense, number 17, Kaja Fancy, second down. And it's a tough first half for Lucas McNeil. And he hasn't had too many halves like this. Two penalties. And those are usually drive stoppers when you're in a rhythm on offense. See if they can keep it going. Transforms a second and two to a second and seven. And Louisville's taking a timeout. Seconds. 
Well, finally on this possession to Keo, the receivers have made some plays, but they didn't help out their starting QB Puma pass early in the game. No, not at all. And, and you see a drop coming across the middle, a drop. It was thrown a little bit behind him, and then this next drop right here ended up in an interception by the Hilltoppers. And then when you decide to go deep to Jalen Smith, who is usually money on, on pass plays when the ball comes and hits his hands, those plays need to be automatic. And so when we, when I look at this overview of the first half, I think Juwan Pass probably was pulled a little too early, but that's okay. Malik Cunningham has his team on a drive. Actually, seven play, 65-yard drive right now. And they're trying to convert, go in before halftime with seven points instead of three. And unlike last week, this drive has been Cunningham throwing the ball. One rush for six yards on this possession. He's five of six passing for 64. Cunningham going to take it himself. And he's inside the 15, spinning out of bounds with 36 seconds left in the quarter. Great block by 2-2 two -two Atwell. Nice job. He knew his quarterback. He knew he wasn't going to get the football. I'm sorry, that was Des Fitzpatrick. But great block. He took out two guys right there. And that's what we talked about in the open. Understanding if you don't get the ball, open it up for somebody else to make a play. Overthrowing Jalen Smith on first down. And only took three seconds off the clock. It's interesting because Malik Cunningham a lot of people in college football wanted him to be a defensive player. They thought he could be a good cornerback. He got some scholarship offers as a DB. But his dad wanted him to play quarterback. He wanted to play quarterback. And Bobby Petrino saw a little Lamar Jackson in him. Now he just needs to polish him as a passer. Cunningham throws it to the Hilltoppers. And it's a touchback. Devin Key. His second pick in as many weeks for WKU. He went to the well one too many times. I understand Malik Cunningham. You just stated Evan. He's gotten down on this drive by passing the football, but he was so late. Was he in bounds? Ooh, that was like, very close. I think I think half of his foot went out of bounds. Didn't the half of that foot hit the ground, though? It's possible only his toe tapped the ground and he kept his heel above the line. It's a huge call right here. Huge Put call. It mildly. Huge. Remember, Hilltoppers will get the ball to start the second half, too. 25 seconds left in the quarter. Let's take a look at it and see. Let's see if he has any ballerina experience with the toe tap. Any toe tap swag drag. Day Williams was blocking the view that time. Here's the the look that's closest and, and it, it, it looks like the heel comes down out of bounds. Yeah, I'm glad I don't have to make this decision. He had a standout freshman season. Conference USA all freshman team. He had the pick six against Maine last week and the Black Bears second play from scrimmage, making the score 14-0 before many of the fans have found their seats. The ruling on the field has changed. It's wow. an incomplete pass. Louisville retains possession for down. That's a gift for the Cardinals. Second chance. And what are you going to do with your second chances? Third and 10, 25 seconds left in the second quarter. I would tell my quarterback, if it's not obviously there, don't force it. Take what we can get. We can walk out of here with three points. Cunningham up the middle on third and 10. And he did not get the first down. Timeout taken by Louisville. Their final timeout with 18 seconds left. And 
This was a premeditated call. Hill Tacos look ready for it. Yeah, Hill Tacos, they were ready. They played a zone coverage. That's the reason why you look at Devin Key, the safety. He came up, almost made the interception to play before, but does a great job of just holding his lane instead of bailing it to a zone. Fourth and two, 18 seconds. And Blanton Creepy coming out onto the field. Bobby Petrino's team just looking for points. What do you think the message is, the Coach? Great drive. You didn't turn it over. Let's continue to build on it. He almost turned it over, but you're right. He didn't turn it over. A coach and almost only counts in two things in life. That's right. Horseshoes and hand grenades. Creaky from 23 gets the Cardinals on the board. <laughs> 12 plays, 81 yards, 246. And Louisville gets points. After tonight, we'll be a quarter of the way through the college football season through three weeks. Obviously, Hurricane Florence impacted this weekend in college football. North Carolina, NC State, Virginia Tech all canceled. The Clemson Tigers, another strong performance today at home. And the Florida State Seminoles oh. off to an ugly start in Willie Taggart's first year on the job in Tallahassee. It doesn't look good. And Edwin, we, we talked about that game earlier when we were looking at Florida State. Just bad, just, just, just bad football turnovers. You can't have that when you're a struggling football team. Tar Heels remain winless, NC State. Dodges West Virginia, maybe. Virginia Tech look good. Virginia moved their game to play in Nashville. They played at Vanderbilt Stadium, where Virginia got off to a great start and won 45 31 over the Ohio Bobcats. Virginia will be Louisville's opponent next week in the Cardinals ACC opener. And there are more questions than answers right now for Louisville in their final tune-up before conference play. Yeah, and it's a lot of questions going into halftime for these guys of this game, but a positive drive that they can take away from their offense, knowing that it's one thing to hope but they were able to make some plays and make it happen coming up with three points. Be surprised if the Hilltoppers are overly ambitious here. Shanley keeps it himself and gets near the first down marker. No timeouts left for Western Kentucky. Their kicker, Ryan Nuss, made one from 44 last year, missed the 48 yard. It was blocked against Maine last week. They're a long way from field goal conversation at their own 33. And if you're Western Kentucky, you're feeling pretty good. Head of the locker room. First meeting in 20 years against Louisville. A huge game for Hilltopper recruiting. Mike Sanford had a busy weekend. He was out at a high school game last night. Scouting, recruiting. All of his assistants were at various games in the Louisville area. So far today, 30 minutes of football. Kyle Fortenberry got him on the board first. And then Davis Shanley, another touchdown. Let's go down to the field. Lindsey Rowley. Thanks, Evan. Coach, today you said that you were going to ride the hot hand. What have you thought of Davis Shanley? You know, he gave us a spark. You know, I was proud of the way that Stephen Duncan came out and moved the chains early. Uh, but we made a decision. We were going to go two quarterbacks. Uh, we we're going to go series and see who has the hot hand. And Davis has done a great job. Uh, proud of the way that, uh, that Duncan played as well. Yesterday, you said you wanted your defense to play with passion. How have they been able to hold Louisville to just a field goal in the first? Well, it's too much, uh, to be honest. Too much. Uh, right before halftime, we got to tighten down uh, both sides of the football and in special teams. We literally have to focus on just one play at a time. Can't worry about the score. We can't worry about extrinsic factors. We got to worry about just executing that one play. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Evan. We thank Lindsey. We thank Coach Sanford. That's our Honda dealers of the Carolinas halftime interview. It's been a testy sideline for Louisville.
Western Kentucky halfway to a marquee victory. 14-3 Hilltoppers at the half. Everything you do matters. No pressure. Cardinals trailing by 11 before we get to the third quarter. Let's check in with Bobby Petrino. Moments ago, he was with Lindsey Rowley. Thanks, Evan. Coach, get a field goal there at the end. We got to take care of the football. We've had some plays, and then we fumble the ball, and we get an interception. So offensively, we need to take care of the football, move it, and get it in the end zone. You know, there's a lot of pressure on our defense now. They're going to have to come out and get the ball back, and we just got to go play and get it in the end zone. You mentioned offense. What prompted you to make a change at quarterback? Yeah, we weren't moving the ball. We had some things that I felt like were there, and we weren't making the plays. So uh, Malik gave us a big lift last week, so I thought he would get that done this week. We've got to go get it done. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Evan. We'll see whether it's Cunningham or pass to start the second half. Meanwhile, Mike Sanford, I'm not sure it was a, a halftime of adjustments. It was a halftime probably stressing. Listen, keeping the focus. His running game came out, and they performed well. They did it running back by committee. Every guy came in and contributed, including their quarterback, Davis Stanley, by leading the charge. And the thing I like about it, you have to give a lot of credit to their offensive line. We talked to Cole Spencer yesterday, and he felt like matchup-wise across the board, we like playing against guys who are big, physical like us versus playing against a team like last week, Maine, when they do a lot of slanting. Bad boy mowers covering ground for Western Kentucky. Look at the rushing yards. It's been a bunch of different guys. Furby, Shanley, LaFrance, and Samuel for Mike Sanford. After they were basically dead last in the nation last year running the football and didn't inspire much confidence for the first two weeks. They've gotten it done so far today. 114 total rushing yards. Hilltoppers out gaining the Cardinals 218 to 139 in the first 30 minutes. And the Hilltoppers will receive to start the second half. Garland LaFrance, the freshman speedster who had originally committed to Texas Tech and Tulane before eventually settling on Western Kentucky, back to return this kick from Blanton Creepy. Plenty of unfinished business here for the Cardinals in the second half, especially defensively. And we'll see what kind of energy Brian Van Gorder's defensive unit emerges here in the third quarter. Coach Petrino talked about a lot of pressure being on the defense. This is not, not the France. This is Darden. And he gets it back out to the 20, and there's a flag down. Lindsey Rowley down the field. the field with Louisville Athletic Director Vince Tyre. Vince, you've got $63 million worth of renovations into this stadium. Take us through some of the changes that have been made. Well, first thing, you know, about Like for the kids in our, in our facilities for the football team with the expanded weight room is twice the size, the training facilities, certainly the coach's office, and then, you know, having a theater room where the kids can all meet. We can finally get the whole team in one room, but it's pretty spectacular. It's over the top. We got to see the lounge area earlier where the players walk from the locker room to the field and fans cheering them on. What's that atmosphere like? Well, that's pretty awesome. That's one of the things we wanted to create was some kind of. Trying to be the heartbeat of the city with the red and white lights and feeling the heartbeat and the noise that it works. I mean, the stadium really got into it tonight. And how significant are these renovations to the state of the football program? Well, I think it helps in recruiting. I think there's a lot of evidence that says if you're continuing to invest in your kids and your facilities and so forth, you're going to get a payback. I think we had a great recruiting class that's here now as freshmen, and we expect to have more going forward. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Evan. Hey, Lindsay, thanks so much. Garland LaFrance. With a gain of five on first down. And Takeo, how about this? Lucky Jackson, leading receiver for the Hilltoppers. No catches. And Western's up 14-3. Back to Jernigan. That's a first down for Western Kentucky. I guess when you're running the football like they did in the first half, over 100 yards rushing collectively, 
for all bats. You're not going to see a lot of guys catching a lot of balls, but Jernigan, he's been pretty active in the first half and coming out the second half with the catch. Three catches, 54 yards for Jernigan, the redshirt junior from Laverne, Tennessee. And after the penalty, that moved him back deep inside their own territory. They get the first down, gain some field position. Sloan in motion, faking the pitch, deep downfield on the wheel route, and Sloan could not hang on. And you just got to be able to make those plays because in these type of games, big plays put you ahead and give you that type of momentum. Yeah, let's remember that one, the drop from Sloan. Here's Fortenberry met immediately by P.J. and Banasor. Nice tackle by P.J. They were playing a zone on the outside. And he was very good with his eyes, Evan. He made the jam and then turned around to see who was coming into his zone. He was able to make the play to set up a third down opportunity. And Banasaur started his college career at Oklahoma, played 10 games for the Sooners three years ago. Didn't play the last two years. Said before the season, it's great to not be on the scout team anymore. Hmm. I bet. Third and five. Shanley completes it. Jackson's first catch of the day is shy in the first down. Great play by Rajay Burns. I like Rajay Burns. He had the big punt return for a touchdown last week, but that was man across the board, and he played the sticks, meaning I understand it's only five yards before they get a first down. He sat on the route where the sticks were, and that's how he was able to make the play. Well, you know why he made the tackle? Because he knew that he would get to go return a punt if he made the tackle. Incentivized. Yeah. Remember Deion Sanders always used to say it was third down. I would start thinking about the return. Fair catch this time for Burns at his own 32. So Louisville gives up one first down, but now has the football trailing by 11. And Malik Cunningham trotting back onto the field as the Cardinals QB. The fans throwing up the L for Louisville. So after last week, Cunningham gave them the spark, rallied them to four scoring drives in the second half, and he was asked in the press conference after the game, do you expect to compete to be the starter this week? And he said, man. <laughs> Maybe he was told, hey, great job coming in, giving us a spark. But settle down, wait your turn. What do you think he'll say after tonight? I'm the guy. <laughs> we'll see. Up the middle. There goes Day Williams. Louisville needs more of that. Tell you what, Evan, now they're starting to turn the tempo up. The offensive line did a great job. The left guard, RJ Scape. No, I'm sorry. The left guard, I think it was Caleb Chandler, did a great job of sealing that hole, allowing the running back to see the lane and get positive yards. 16 yards for Williams. Cunningham gives it again. Williams, great vision. He saw the hole. He breaks the tackle. And he's down to the Hilltoppers 30 yard line. Great job on the right side of that offensive line. That's good. You look at Makai Becton being able to push his guy out to, to let the cutback come back across. And that's what they need. They talked about they made some adjustments last week at the second half that, in, that compelled him to be able to run the ball more. 37 yards on the last few plays, and now the completion to Smith, his third catch. Down to the 22-yard line, it'll be second and two. When you look at this offense, this is the way it's supposed to be ran. Quick completions, being able to get guys in certain positions. Jalen Smith sitting right there in the slot. One-on-one -on -one football. Late substitution, Devontae Pete 
going to the sideline. Jordan Davis, extra tight end, came in. Cunningham keeps it, has a hole. Malik Cunningham unable to get to the end zone, but he's got first and goal. Darden saved the touchdown for Western. When you look at this formation, Coach Petrino bring in three tight ends, meaning power formation for run. He gives it to Malik Cunningham on a simple sweep. And when you have that, you fake the dive. It makes it easy. Play call. 16 yards on that first. Now to the five-yard line on first and goal. Ben Holt, the captain with the stop. For those who joined us late, it was Jawan Puma Pass who started this game for the Cardinals. He had a pretty good game against Alabama, 112 QB rating. Struggled last week in the elements. Torrential monsoon, and Cunningham has taken the torch. Cunningham looking under pressure. Throws it away. Malik Cunningham, they ran the same play three times, but on this wrinkle that they ran, they decided to pass. Kamari Averitt was wide open in the back of the end zone. And, and that was wide open for a touchdown. And those are the type of plays that, as a quarterback, you got to go through your progressions. Averitt is in the back of the end zone. He's like, throw it up, throw it up. I'm here, I'm here. How much harder is it to go through the progressions when you're on the run? It's hard, but if you're a running quarterback, this should be something implemented as far as what you do. He thought he saw a hole that closed really quickly. Evan Saner on the defensive line was right there. On that possession, I thought they was going to go to Jalen Smith, but nice job by the Hilltoppers having the built-in double team by the corner and the safety. And that was Paris and Green preventing any look to Smith, and now here's Creaky. 23-yard field goal attempt from the right hand. Sounds will help me relax a bit. At least we don't have to worry about home. All those who are dealing with the elements of Hurricane Florence in the Carolinas, hoping for the best. Western Kentucky led 14 nothing. Didn't allow Louisville to score until the final minute of the first half. And now the Cardinals have scored the last two uh, last two field goals. But it's field goals instead of touchdowns. So the Hilltopper defense has stood tough in the red zone. They have done a good job. Done exactly what was needed to be done. But France chirping with Juwan's brother team pass after the play. Western Kentucky retaking the field on offense. We expect to see Davis Shane. to be able to move now and he's going to let you know I'm not having it in my zone in my area. I heard chat with Brian Van Gorder yesterday about Jared Jackson. So he's been a little inconsistent but he's got potential to be a great great impactful defensive end for the Cardinals. And the thing I liked about that play he played with his hands. You like guys who play with their hands. Complete to Furby and he's thrown down. Here's Robert Hicks, the freshman linebacker. Robert Hicks does a nice job. They played a simple zone, a cover three zone. Robert Hicks drops to his area. 
reads the quarterback and comes up and makes the play on the tackle. Nice job. Obviously, the Cardinals without John Grenard, who suffered a hand injury. Ligament tear in his hand. The coaching staff said he'll be out for a while. They miss him tremendously, Evan. On third down, that's complete Lucky Jackson. will move the chains for the Hilltoppers. Lucky Jackson, first catch of the night, second catch of the night. But this is the thing we talked about. What do we expect to see out of these guys? Run, 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 and let Davis Shanley be in a third down situation because he is the prototypical size of a quarterback, and he's able to scan the field and find the open receiver. Nine-yard gain on third down. Fresh set of downs for the Hilltoppers and their redshirt freshman quarterback from Duluth, Georgia, Davis Shanley. Not the play clock, but a false start. False start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Tyler Witt. Guilty of the infraction will cost him five. Davis Shanley obviously redshirted last year. He played two years as a starter at South Forsyth High School. Completed 60% of his passes there. And he also ran for over 1,000 yards in two years. So he's been a dual threat guy. We were told coming into this week that Drew Eccles, if he was healthy and capable of playing, he would be the guy. But with him unavailable due to injury, it's Shanley and Duncan. As Shanley overthrows Mike Juan Dean right there, he had him open. Oh, he had him open. That's a play I know he wished he could have that throw back. Western Kentucky did a great job of sending the, the speed motion going across the zone, and you're outflanking the zone. When you outflank the zone, putting more receivers in the area, you have these type of plays to where players become wide open. Second down and 15 for Western Kentucky. Under pressure, Shanley completes it. Jacquez Sloan has the first down and more near midfield. What a catch by Jacquez Sloan. With the Davis, pressure coming. Davis Shanley, he felt the pressure. Look at it, he went left to right, stood in the pocket, knew he was going to get hit. Jacquez Sloan with a nice catch, soft hands. Now it's Furby up the middle, delivers the hit to D. Smith in the backfield. This is the tempo they want to play with. Yes. Now you're going to see Louisville. They're looking to the sideline, trying to get the right call so they can align. Coach Sanford knows that, so he's trying to push the tempo so the guys can't get set. Shanley had nowhere to go there. Spun down by Hicks and Avery in the backfield. Shanley is not the ideal quarterback when you want to run his own read. Louisville knows that. Defensively, especially, they do. A year ago, in his first year as a head coach, Mike Sanford took a step back, did not call the plays, made the decision in the offseason to become the play caller in 2018. He's got an important one right here. Third down and one with his team up by eight against the state rival on the road. Timeout. I was expecting some type of dive. Some type of dive to try to get a first down, but they called the timeout. Big third down coming up, but first at time 4R. Trivia question. Western Kentucky's last three head coaches, all coaches now at FBS programs, name those three schools. Get back to that in a moment on third and one. Looks like a dive for the first down. Yeah. Looks as if they stayed with the same play. Try to Drew, Drew Eccles on the sideline. One of the few fifth-year seniors who made their first career starts in week one, him and Oklahoma State's Taylor Cornelius, the other in FBS. Deep ball from Shanley to Sloan. It's 
knocked down. Cornelius Sturgill there to knock it down. Oh, Cornelius wants his play back. David Shanley did a nice job of recognizing the one-on-one. -on -one. But look at Cornelius Sturgill. He gets his head around. He leans back into the receiver. That's a clinic take. The only thing you want, you want him to come down with the football. But as a DB, that's exactly how you're supposed to play it, the deep end. Second and ten. Shanley, wide open, man. Goodness gracious. Mike Quan Dean to the ten-yard line. Where was the Cardinal defense there? Where it goes back to tempo, they hurried it up on that last play. You had two guys jumping the flat route. They went tempo, they hurried it up. You see. They the tempo forces us to get right back for LaFrance's run to the one. After Dean caught it and ran it for 31. It's a nine yard plunge from LaFrance and the Hilltoppers on the brink again. CJ Avery shaking up down. and he goes down. Now Avery, just a sophomore, but a guy who played all 13 games last year for Louisville. It was his own man, Robert Hicks, who dove into his knee. Yeah, that's friendly fire. Guys trying to be relentless, get to the football. Just hope he's okay. He's really struggling to put weight yeah. on that knee. Sophomore from Mississippi, he rolled at Louisville in January of 2017. He rolled in January because he wanted to avoid a redshirt year, and he did. He played every single game as a true freshman. Meanwhile, Western Kentucky is basically ready to snap the ball, but Avery's still taking his time off the field, and now there's a flag. Flag was thrown by the back judge. There is no foul. We're waiting for the player to leave the field. Reset the game clock to 40 seconds. Another look at our CPI security red zone where the Hilltoppers have delivered the good so far tonight. Shanley with a touchdown throw to Fortenberry and a touchdown run late in the second quarter. Shanley taken down this time, though. Great penetration in the backfield by Peterson. Tavarius Peterson. This is what it means to stay disciplined. They ran the fake dive. He said, you know what? That's not my responsibility. I have the quarterback. He stayed outside. He was able to make a tackle for a loss. Big play by Tavarius Peterson. Peterson's one of the guys that Petrino singled out, said with Grenard out, this guy has a chance to step up. Made his first start against Indiana State last week. Led the team with eight tackles. Third down and goal. Davis Shanley looking under pressure. Down he goes. GG Robinson got there. Lucky Jackson split out wide. He was waiting on Lucky Jackson to uncover, but by that time, G.G. Robinson comes through, defeats his blocker, and comes away with the sack. That's a big play for Louisville. They needed that. Big field goal here, 32-yard attempt for Ryan Nuss. And it's oh, blocked! That ball still loose. Finally, Mike Juan Dean has it, loses it. And on the other side of the field, about 40 yards from where the ball was spotted, Louisville will take over. Now the stadium is erupting. Now the momentum is back on Louisville's side. That was a great defensive series. 
by these guys. I'm not sure who got their hand on it. Talk about a hot potato. I mean, you know, these are the drills you talk about doing in preseason, scoop and score. I think it was Jared Goldwire who got his paw up on the ball. It was. Jared Goldwire did a nice job. He got skinny in the hole and got his hand up and was able to block it. And they gained 40 yards on the ridiculous fumble. Day Williams up the gut for five. I don't know about you, TK. I was thinking as they lined up for that field goal, this is gigantic for Western Kentucky to go back up by 11. All of a sudden, Louisville knocking on the door, a touchdown and a two, and we're all square. And that's why you never can take anything for granted, because you never do know. Cunningham didn't like what he saw, now slings it to the perimeter, and Williams... Will be shy of the first down. It'll be third and about four. Louisville needs to convert right here. You give a lot of credit to Western Kentucky's defense. They have been excellent in the red zone today. Only allowing six points when it really could have been 14 points. Let's see if they have any specialty plays from Petrino coming up right here. Officially third and five. Eight seconds on the play clock here. Cunningham keeps it up the middle. First down inside the 10. Nice play call right up the gut. Third and five. If you want to make it easy, keep it in your best player's hands on the offense who's running the football. Malik Cunningham, great fake, and he just found the seam up the middle. Here, Trell Green, starting safety, shaken up, was jogging off the field. First and goal from the nine. Cunningham's at 96 rushing yards in the game. Oh, this one goes nowhere. Day Williams rejected by Eli Brown. Eli, Eli Brown, I see you. That is a hit. Whoa. Eli Brown, former Kentucky Wildcat. Played 22 games in the SEC for the fellas in Lexington. That's playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Final seconds of the third quarter. One more play. Cunningham. Can he get around the corner? Not quite. Gains four yards. It puts him at 100 on the game. Cardinals knocking on the door as we take the turn for the fourth. Sanford frustrated by the block kick. Night for football in Louisville. Do the Cardinals have a fourth quarter comeback in them? It was 14 nothing at one point. It was 14-3 at the half. Now it's 14-6, and it's third down for the Cardinals. For the second straight week, Malik Cunningham has given Bobby Petrino's offense a spark. Dave Williams motions out of the backfield. Cunningham surveys under pressure. Gets out of trouble. Uh-oh. Cunningham cannot get to the pylon. Looked like he was going to make it. Listen, I thought he was set. And you give Western Kentucky a lot of credit for holding their zones and locking on to men who are wide open. But they did a great job of containing Malik Cunningham. He's very impressive, very exciting runner. And they're going to go for it, too, on fourth down. Now the offense is staying on the field here. Spotted at the one-yard line. Fourth and goal. Power set. Touchdown, Cardinals!
It took three quarters and 37 seconds in the fourth, but Louisville finally finds the end zone as Dan Williams takes it in from one yard out. You talk about power football. That was power football. When we come back and we take a look at that, just look at the alignment and the movement. The offensive line got on that left side. Nice job. Interesting. They could go for the tie. Instead, they just send out creaking. Get it within one. The red Everlast boxing glove signed by Ali into the arms of Day Williams. Powers into the end zone for the Cardinals. I always on the Louisville defense. And look at the, the offensive line did a great job. They just overloaded that entire side. He went three tight ends, put all three tight ends to one side. There was no way you can get around the wall like that. Great play calling by Bobby Petrino. Still 14 plus minutes to play. Louisville kicks it deep with a one point deficit. Coming out of the end zone, LaFrance. Going nowhere. Western Kentucky will start at its own 14-yard line. If I'm Western Kentucky right now, you cannot let the moment become too big for you. These guys talked about yesterday, hey, we like having the opportunity to play Power 5 teams. They wanted to come in here and get a chance to get a win. They felt like they could. But now, the momentum is against them for the first time in the game. They're backed up inside the 15. What are they going to do to give their quarterback, David Stanley, some room to operate? Crowd is in the game for Louisville. It's DeAndre Furby. He goes across the 15, but not much more than that. Second and eight. Listen to the sound of the pass. Oh, they are hitting. You gotta love that. Marlon Character, the cornerback, came up, and he wants to let you know I'm here more than just a cover. Chandler, pocket collapsing. Offensive line did a decent job of recovering there when it looked like Shanley was going to have no time. It's third down. The offensive line did a very good job of protecting him. We talked about the cornerback, Marlon Character. He came off the edge on a blitz. Great pickup by the running back, which allowed David Stanley to have more time to throw it out of bounds and not take a negative play. So you wanted to play college football, David Shanley. You wanted to play in games like this. Third and eight. Quick throw. To, did he hang on? Fortenberry bobbled it, but they're crediting him with a first down for Western Kentucky. Yikes. It's third down and eight. Trayshawn Smith, the safety. You to know where the sticks are on the football field. You are giving him way too much room. Cal Fortenberry, he does a nice job of coming through, but he's a tight end. You don't have to align that far off of him. That's the reason why he was able to get the first down. Huge recovery to her by Fortenberry to hang on for the first down. Back in the hands of Furby, and he gains three. We talked about Robert Smith, Robert Hicks coming into the game, the inside linebacker for the Cardinals as a true freshman. Dorian Etheridge, he's out. He's done a pretty nice job of filling in, aligning guys, and making some plays. Lucky Jackson on the outside, out of bounds at the 37-yard line for the Hilltoppers' first down. Marlon Character, he's playing off coverage, even though he's in zone. I think a lot of times you have to understand where you are on the field. And Coach Van Gorda, he talked about, hey, 
To become good, you have to experience to grow. You have to have that experience, and he just don't want that experience to be bad plays in order for his young team to grow. Shanley gets rid of it. Crowd wants a flag. Robinson was there with the pressure. Petrino wanted that intentional grounding. Let's see if he got outside of the pocket. I don't know. That's, that's, that looks a little close. It was very close. Second and ten. Complete. LaFrance. It'll be third and three. And another key play coming up with Mike Sanford. Dialing something up, and Brian Van Gorder, former comrade in South Bend, and they were the OC and DC respectively under Brian Kelly for the Fighting Irish, now going head to head in one heck of a college football atmosphere here in Louisville. This will be the biggest third down of the game right here. Very big third down. Furby and LaFrance in the backfield. And there's a false start. And this is going to become a third and eight. False start. Offense, number 32. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Third. So Furby jumped a little bit too quickly from the backfield. Think about Western Kentucky. They are 7 for 13 on third down. So they have been very efficient when they get to the third down area. Shanley hit as he throws. It's caught on the sideline. Quinn Jernigan. And how about Shanley hanging in there tough? You talk about guts. You talk about resilience, knowing that you're going to get hit. But you decide to stand in the pocket, and you trust your receiver, Quinn Jernigan, it's going to come down with the catch. Marlin character, he had no idea where he, the ball was. He was lost. He was lost. Wow. Eight for 14 now on third downs in Western Kentucky in the Louisville territory. Shanley gives it to the big fella, Furby in the backfield. He's run hard tonight. There's eight more yards for the redshirt senior from Tennessee. The left side of the line for Western Kentucky. You look at Cole Spencer, Tyler Witt. These guys are clearing it out, making it easy for the running backs to get positive yards. Furby to the sideline, replaced by Joshua Samuel. Second and two for the Hilltoppers. Ten minutes to go in the fourth. How about Samuel? Taken down from behind by Smith. After a 25-yard game. And for the second time tonight, Louisville's D. Smith shaking up. Time out of the field in a 13 Western Kentucky leading Louisville. And this has been a heck of a drive. 10 plays, 62 yards so far for the Hilltoppers. Taken nearly five minutes off the clock. Now let's check out what happened to D. Smith here. He's had a tough night. Oh, looks like he just kind of he rolled this, like his ankle twisted and he was grabbing his knee. That was kind of strange. Hopefully he'll be able to come back into the game. Already lost one captain on defense. Grenard Smith, the other captain on the sidelines. Who's going to step up for the Cardinals defense? Both from a playmaking perspective, also from a leadership standpoint. On second and seven, fake the handoff. Downfield. Knocked away. Trayshawn Smith steps up, denying Mike.
Tyquan Dean the touchdown, and goodness, that looked open. That's, that was a marvelous play, and that wasn't even Trayshawn Smith met. He did a nice job of coming off of his guy on the backside, and he was able to come in and get the PBU. Well, think about Western Kentucky's field goal unit. They do not want to send Ryan Nuss back out of the field after what happened last time. Hilltoppers have been successful on third down tonight, 8 of 14. Huge one here. And before the snap, a timeout. Timeout, Western Kentucky, their second. Over 30 seconds. Through that door anymore, but he's supporting the gang on Twitter. Let's go, boys. Huge third down right here for his Bird Gang defense. Cardinal Stadium coming alive. Davis Shamley, 19 of 27 so far today. Slings it, LaFrance to the 20 and out of bounds at the 18 yard line. Shy of the mark to gain. I really like that play call right there. Swing him out on the side and try to get the numbers. Essentially, all it is is a screen. But you have to give a lot of credit to Rajay Burns. Look how he fights off the block, and he's able to make the tackle, pitch him out of bounds. He had a 32-yarder blocked. This is a 35, maybe a 36-yarder. Ryan Nuss from the left hash to make it a four-point game. Gets it off and sneaks it through the right upright. So that forces Louisville to think touchdown. Which is probably how Bobby Petrino was thinking anyway. Uh, no question, but you give a lot of credit to these guys. They came down and made the field goal. 14 plays, 68 yards. But Evan, they took six minutes off the clock. There was six minutes of time of possession for these guys. I was worried about would the moment become too big for them? And it did. Let's take a moment and revisit our AFLAC trivia question from earlier tonight. Last three Western Kentucky coaches all leading different FBS programs right now. That Ducks having the ball. Willie Taggart at Florida State, former Hilltopper. Struggling. Jeff Brom at Purdue, Louisville alum. Obviously, Bobby Petrino spent the 2013 season racking up eight victories for the men from Bowling Green. Did you know the answer to that? Yeah, you did too. Yeah, you did. Most Western Kentucky fans, I think, came up with a response. week against Indiana State, the Louisville special teams came up big. Rajay Burns, the 55-yard punt return. Can they deliver some explosiveness on the kickoff? No. Touchback. First and 10 for the 25. Five years ago, Bobby Petrino took the helm in Bowling Green. Had glowing things to say about his experience there. They went 8-4. and four. They did not get a bowl berth. But this Western Kentucky program now has been bowl eligible seven straight seasons. Been to five bowl games in that span. They're not used to being 0-3. In fact, the Western Kentucky program hasn't been 0-2 or 0-3 since the 2011 season. They did finish that year strong, going 7-1 in the Sun Belt Conference. Became bowl eligible for the first time in program history since moving to FBS. Bobby Petrino's Certainly known for his offense. What can the Cardinals dial up here? Cunningham looking deep. Smith wide open, and he dropped it again. Are you kidding me? Wow. I mean, what do you say? Malik Cunningham made the perfect read, the perfect play call. Jalen Smith, obviously, he, he's in a funk right now, guys. He is in a funk. 
I don't even think he even touched the ball. Went over 2,000 yards in his career last week, the 11th in Cardinals history to do that. And it's like he's got the yips. Second down. And he had separation. Another open Cardinal at the 41 yard line is Seth Dawkins. First catch of the night. First catch of the night for Seth Dawkins. But he did a nice job of uncovering around the zone to be able to make himself open. And now what we're starting to see, Louisville is giving more confidence to, to Malik Cunningham as far as giving him the ability to be able to throw down the field. 18th straight game, Seth Dawkins with a reception going back to the 2016 season. First down for the 41. Seven and a half to play in the fourth. Malik Cunningham takes off across midfield, across the 45, stumbling into the 42. I like what I saw just in from Malik Cunningham. He purposely looked to the left. Maybe he was a little late looking to the left, but he went through his progressions. He said, you know what? I'm not going to force it. I'm going to tuck it and run. Because of the uniform he wears, it's unfair to bring this up, but he, he looks a little bit like Lamar Jackson on a play like that. Yeah, that is unfair, but he's very efficient. And he's doing a great job tonight for this football team. Spinning away from tacklers out of bounds. Spotted at the 36-yard line. Now what this does for the Western Kentucky defense, these guys are tired. When you play against a quarterback like this, me knowing from experience, <laughs> you want to understand, hey, either we're going to play zone or we're going to play man. Do we have to account for the quarterback? You have to account for the 11th guy, which is the quarterback on the offensive side. Now, these guys are tired. Which QB made you the most tired? I have played Michael Vick. No. All right. Michael Vick, he was... I hated playing against Michael Vick. This time, Cunningham hands it off. And on the number 19, Hassan. Hassan Hall with the run. Let's go down to Lindsay on the sideline for more on Cunningham. Lindsay. Yeah, guys, I spoke with Malik Cunningham earlier this week, and he said although he was happy to be able to come in and contribute last week, he was not satisfied. He said if he gets another opportunity, he wanted to come in, limit his mistakes, and play a complete game. Cunningham tries to get outside, gets past Holtz. flag and gets it. I think they're going to call Drell Green with the flag on this. And Deontay Ruffin with the late hit. I'm not so sure if that's a late hit, though. I can see why it's called. First of all, foul. Defense on the line. Late hit out of bounds. I think this is to the goal. First down. And I understand your defensive mindset and frustration over that call. The speed of the play going toward the sideline. Yeah. We're under six minutes, though. That's a big 15-yard penalty, actually 12 yards, half the distance to the goal. Cunningham takes a look to the sideline. Bobby Petrino said about Malik Cunningham, he's the type of quarterback you don't really know how good he can be until you see him in a game against game speed. Close to the goal line, but just short of the end zone. Day Williams down to the one. Day Williams is running with the purpose, but you look at the left side of that offensive line, you look at Nate Scheller, the center, Linwood Ford, Kenny Thomas, these guys are caving down that side, making it easy or easier for the running backs to get positive yards. Their touchdown tackle, Becton is on the line, not in the backfield. And it's up the middle, Day Williams, to give the Cardinals their first lead of the night. Wow, I just 
just talked about a limb one for Kenny Thomas. Look at the push that they get. Dave Williams is having a very, very nice game today. His teammates are showing him a lot of love. Eight rushes, 55 yards, two touchdowns. And he tore his ACL last year. He missed this, this year's spring. So it's good to see him back. The Louisville Cardinals have the momentum. Now they have the lead. Our game summary brought to you by Ally Bank. Change of fortune in the second half. Despite Louisville being just two of 10 on third downs in the game, the Cardinals have taken their first lead. And now it's time to see what Western Kentucky can do against this adversity on the road. If I'm, if I'm Western Kentucky right now, Evan, it's important to know, hey, guys, we don't have to press. We've been moving the football the entire game. Let's continue to do that and play smart. Don't do anything out of character. From three yards deep in the end zone, Darden brings it out and pays it off. Out to the 37-yard line, and that's where the Hilltopper offense will begin. It's a gutsy return. Very nice return, and they did a nice job of setting up the blocks. Thought he was going to make a house call on that one. For the first time today, the Hilltoppers playing from behind. Joshua Samuel is the back alongside Shanley, the QB. This place is loud. Samuel takes it. Can't get to the 40. It's a two yard gain, second and eight. It's pretty amazing when you think about it for Western Kentucky. They played more quarterbacks so far this season. And they played basically in the last six years. There's Kyle Fortenberry across the middle. Gains five, maybe six to create a third and short. It seems as if every time they need a play, whether or not if it's setting up the block or coming down with it, Cal Fortenberry does a great job. We'll Injury come back on the after field. we take this break. We can help you plan for that. Walking off the field slowly. It's time to look at Louisville's upcoming schedule and our Logan's Roadhouse upcoming road trip. Cardinals at Virginia next week, and they host former Hilltopper Willie Taggart, struggling Seminoles two weeks from now here at Cardinal Stadium. Brian Van Gorder is seeing one guy go down after another. He lost Bernard, he lost Etheridge, D. Smith shaken up, and now the guy who replaced Etheridge in the middle, Robert Hicks to the sideline. Yeah, and that's tough, especially when you have to rely on guys who haven't really contributed as far as game time experience. That's the young perspective, what he talked about, understanding we need to get them good experience. Hopefully they can continue to make plays. Looks like Nico Kiki now in the middle for the Cardinal defense. On third and one. It's Trigg up the middle. He's very close. And with the spot, it's going to be a hilltopper first down. Nico Kiki stepping up in the hole, trying to push the power back. Offensive line got more push than the defensive line was able to withhold. Samuel. That's an easy ten. Western Kentucky has run the ball tonight better than they have in a long time. They have, and they've done it by the committee of running backs. Over 100 yards rushing. They've done a very nice job, but uh, you will have to acknowledge their offensive line. They've done a marvelous job of being able to create scenes, especially on the left side. 
running behind Cole Spencer, even though he has a broken thumb. And another Cardinal defender shaken up. Western Kentucky closing in on 200 yards rushing. Furby leading the team with 74. Samuel with 46. LaFrance with 34. And the Cardinal defense missing a bunch of key guys. Here's what happened to John Grenard early in the game against Alabama. You see the hand go to the ground and painful injury, a significant ligament tear. This is a guy who had seven sacks last year. But to their credit defensively, they've done a pretty good job of, of plugging in play, meaning, hey, next man up, we're going to plug a guy in, and I expect the same thing out of you than we got from our veteran guys who come out here and make it happen. Well, this is the final tune-up before ACC play begins for the Louisville Cardinals next week. They will be in Charlottesville to take on Bronco Mendenhall and the Virginia Cavaliers. West Durham, James Bates, Rebecca Capel will be in Monticello for the 12:30 kick on your regional sports network. Virginia with a victory over Ohio today. Game played in the Music City. It's amazing how quickly they put that together with the storm approaching and pretty cool how Vanderbilt accommodated them. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was a nice transaction to make that happen. You think so? All right. We got 342 on the clock. Western Kentucky not in field goal range yet. They've got a new set of downs at the Louisville 41-yard line. One time out for the Hilltoppers who are looking for their first win of the year. And again, if you joined us late, this is a Western Kentucky team that, like Louisville, opened the season against a top five opponent. They played Wisconsin, who, by the way, were shocked at Camp Randall today by BYU. And that final score, 34 to 3, okay. They come back home, play their home opener against Maine, go up 21 0 in six minutes, and then let the Black Bears roll off 31 consecutive points. Western Kentucky. Clock restarts. Fourth quarter, three point game. Louisville's won the last nine meetings between the Cardinals and the Hilltoppers. Shanley keeps it. And you get thrilled. Pretty good stick there from Smith. Nice weave by David Shanley. They, Louisville showed the blitz coming from the right side, but on the left side, they brought the corner, Cornelius Sturgill. Shanley saw it. He kept the ball. He was able to get some positive yards on first down. On second and five, Shanley keeps it. No communication. Lucky Jackson was going deep. The pass went short with Trayshawn Smith in the coverage. And a third and five in what most certainly is four down territory for the Hilltoppers. We asked Mike Sanford yesterday about what kind of range Ryan Nuss would have. He said if they can get it to the 35 or the 30, they can take a shot. Feel really comfortable around the 25. Third and five from the 36. Shanley runs out of time, and now it's fourth and very, very long. I tell you what, PJ Blue did. PJ Blue did a nice job on the outside. They ran like a switch route, trying to get somebody rough. But with the jam, it forced Davis Shanley to hold on to the football because the route was not there, and it allowed the defensive line to be able to get the second. Jared Jackson, Yasir Abdullah were right there, and suddenly it's fourth and 14. Shanley incomplete. Kentucky with one timeout. 
That was a good play. That was one of the things when you looked at that defensive call by Brian Van Gordon. He did not blitz. He went to a pure zone. He only rushed three defensive linemen, meaning he dropped eight. And when you drop eight in a zone, and if you have that amount of yards to go on the stick, it's hard for a quarterback to fit the ball in a certain area because you have guys underneath as well as on top. There's a tight space there. He tried to throw it over Abdullah, but under the deep defense. And Shanley, who's played good and tough, coming off the bench in relief to Stephen Duncan. Now hopes the defense can get a stop to give him a chance for a game time field goal. Timeout taken by Mike Sanford. After the Day Williams carry for a couple. So clock stops here with virtually two minutes to go. Bobby Petrino, just by keeping it on the ground, can run another minute 20, minute 25, minute 30 off the clock. If Western Kentucky can prevent the Cardinals from getting the first down and Louisville scores the punt, then we're talking about Western Kentucky trying to go the length of the field to get the field goal rings with no timeouts and about 30 seconds or so to go. So what exactly does that mean? If you're Louisville right now, I will continue to feed Dave Williams. I will continue to run the zone read option with Malik Cunningham because that's two threats right there, which is very hard to stop. Second and seven situation. Let's see what the general Bobby Petrino cooks up. On second and seven. Cunningham. Able to break the tackle. Tremendous grab by Cray. Roger Craig does a good job. Sees it coming on the outside. Tackle for a loss. And so I expect him, they're not going to, they shouldn't be throwing the football here. They're going to take as much time off the clock as they can. Knowing Western Kentucky does not have any more timeouts. And Lake Cunningham coming off the bench, 20 carries, 133 yards. That's 6.7 yards per carry. Cardinals have not been good on third down today. Cunningham ball. keeps it, and he's going down to the backfield. So the play clock will begin. There's only going to be about 25 seconds left when this play clock expires. D'Angelo Malone did a nice job of holding down contain to be able to get the tackle for a loss. Can Shanley do it? I think Shanley. He, he, He's had some pretty good opportunities. He's created some opportunities. But it's going to be tough. It's definitely going to be tough knowing the type of calls. Louisville takes the timeout. 25 seconds to go. And remember, Louisville's defense coming up huge on what was a 32-yard field goal try for Ryan Nuss. And this is where the game took a turn. The momentum turned back into Louisville's favor, and they didn't give it up from that point on. It gave them belief. You see the guys came out excited. The fans stayed in the game. They continue to push the team. That's what college football is all about, Evan, the swing of momentum. After tonight, both teams will take a deep breath and say, all right, we're at the quarter pole of our season. And I'm not sure either team is going to be happy with where they're at. But there are still three quarters, nine games of the season left. Both teams hopeful for 10. Oh, and they may have just roughed the punter, but there's no flag. And the kick returner, Craig, got hammered, and there's a flag. 16 seconds to go, and let's check the marker. At both ends of that punt, there was hard contact. LaMarcus Thomas smoked the return. 
Was it a legal? Was it a legal hit? I guarantee you they're discussing the same thing. That's no foul. Kick catch interference on the kicking team. 15 yard penalty. First down. So instead of having it at the 14 with 16 seconds left, it moves to the 29. And you see, with the, with the rule, they want you to keep the head down, but that is a huge 15-yard penalty. I guarantee you there are a lot of Louisville fans on their couches, off their couches, yelling about that call. And I know they're spilling their beverages right now, too. Remember, Louisville's lost a bunch of defensive players. Bernard is out. Etheridge is out. D. Smith, Robert Hicks, London Yacopo, all banged up. Western Kentucky has it. They marked it at the 30-yard line. So if you think they can get it to the 35, that's about 35 yards away. And it's possible, too. You know, when you get first downs, I say that they have at least enough time for two plays. You can't complete a pass that shy of a first down in the field of play. No. Incomplete. Over the head of Lane with 10 seconds to go. Defense spread out, playing deep. Shanley steps up across the middle. Little hook and ladder caught by Jernigan. Finds and Jackson, and he's out of bounds with, well, is there any time left? I think he got out. I think he got out with one second left. I'm not sure. They're at the 34-yard line. If they give him a second, it would be a 51-yard try. What a play call. And the referee just announced there's one second to go. The old school hook and left. And it worked as well as you'd ever seen. So, Adam Krause, a true freshman walk-on holder, is going to hold for Ryan Nuss from 51 or 52. Let's take a look at the clock, bottom left of your screen. about as close as it gets. I think it was the right call, though, to give the Hilltoppers one more play. The football gods appreciate the drama. I tell you what, I can tell you who don't appreciate the drama. That's the kicker. Imagine the pressure that's on him right now. Well, his career long is 44. Coach Sanford told us yesterday that they feel like he's good to 48, maybe 50. This is going to be 51 or 52, if they even have a chance. Uh, right there, he's out of bounds. You see there's still one second on the clock. Holy cow. This should be, what, a 50, 51 yarder right here. 51 or 52. With a true freshman walk-on holder. The long snapper is a sophomore named Ben Reeder. And the kicker's a veteran, 50-year senior, Ryan Nuss. And this is the thing. The longer you have to go to make a field goal, the lower the trajectory has to be in order to get that distance on it. He had a 32-yarder block, and he made one from 35. This from 51 for the tie. Will Petrino take a timeout? Yes. From the sideline, 
The Cardinals take their final timeout and he gets the kickoff and he did not have the distance. He just that's interesting because he was a little bit wide, maybe a couple yards wide and a couple yards short. And now, after, I mean, if you're on a golf course and you hit one, it, it gives you, if you could, if you could take two shot golf, you have a much greater advantage. Hey, the second shot golfer always wins. Right. And so we look at that and you see Ryan Nuss, he, he took a shot, he knew the whistle had blown, but it gave him an opportunity to see, okay, how low can I go, how much ump I can put in it. And he looked at the Louisville sideline and just shook his head like, yeah, 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 I know I can make it. So let's see. What a night it's been at Cardinal Stadium. All comes down to this final play. The Fairfield, Ohio native. Five foot nine, 200 pound kicker, Ryan Nuss. And if you're Louisville right now, you want to have your D-line and just tell him, get as skinny as you possibly can in between the gaps of the, of the offense and just throw your hands up in the air. From 51, Nuss for the tie. It's no good. He had the leg, but just wide to the right. Mike Sanford giving some dab to his kicker, even in defeat. And the Cardinals survive a hard-fought fight from their rivals from down the road in Boiling Green. I tell you what, you have to give Western Kentucky a lot of credit. They came in and played way over their head when you look at what happened last week against Maine. Came down to the last second field goal. Could Ryan Nuss nail it? Long enough, but wide, too wide. Sanford, you look at his facial expressions. Oh, well, the Hilltoppers fall to 0-3. And, and that doesn't tell half the story about what this team might be able to do in Conference USA Act. And they've got one more non-conference tune-up. They're in Muncie, Indiana next week to take on Ball State. Meanwhile, ACC play begins for the Cardinals next Saturday in Charlottesville on your regional sports network. What a privilege it was to bring this one to you. For our producer, Alex Martino, our director, Tom Hewitt, Lindsey Rowley down on the field, Takeo Spikes, my partner in the booth. I'm Evan Leffler saying good night from Louisville, where the Cardinals win it 20 to 17. I created the Facebook group, Wolfpack Hustle. Because